Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of science to hit today, and a lot of it is awesome eye candy. We'll get a look at cosmology, an exoplanet, climate, and space weather. We're starting with the sun over at spaceweathernews.com, and the primary features are the coronal holes. But the filaments are wiggly as well, which you should have seen in the red opening sequence. We have little pops at umbral fields, coronal motions, and other normal small-scale quiet activity, but none of it is really eruptive at this time and the solar wind remains mostly worked by those coronal holes. Quick look at the top quake of the day. They can handle this in that part of Indonesia if it's not too high in the magnitude 6 range. Let's start the science articles coming right back to the sun. Folks, the solar polar magnetic fields data created a flood of solar cycle forecasts for about the same kind of cycle we just had. Not too big, not falling into grand minimum just yet. But as the last eight months have progressed, we have seen an ever-increasing number of papers forecasting a larger cycle power. This is the latest, a bump up in expected activity, and while they remain a small fraction of the more than 200 solar cycle forecasts published in the last few years, these do represent a scary trend that is made scarier by the weakening of Earth's magnetic field. We don't need a major super flare to watch the grids collapse, wires melt, arcs spark, and catch their surroundings on fire. We don't want any hint of the sun doing more than expected when Earth's magnetic field is doing less. Folks, the December and annual climate reports are out, and we'll start with December, where they scare the world with the nonsense percentiles chart, which makes it look like the planet was much warmer than anything else. But here is what happens when you don't use batty stats processes and you give them more raw data. Same December temperatures looks a little less red dominated now, doesn't it? So when you hear it was the warmest year ever in 2020 and you first get past the unreal drop in pollution due to lockdown and how it warmed the world, we've seen the papers. You also have to know that this map is what they'll show with only specks of blue. But this was the more raw data and you can see that they are playing politics with the batty stats there. And by the way, if you take out the Siberian marks, which by the way are 50% extrapolated, and beyond that, are due to increased particle flux and ozone destruction at the North Polar Cusp, where the solar wind prefers to enter, floodgates opening due to Earth's weakening magnetic field. If not for that, 2020 wouldn't have ranked in the top 10 warmest years. Time for some eye candy. This is the newest and most powerful supersonic turbulence animation. It is not only incredible to see, but really reminds us of the cosmic web, or a molecular cloud in a galaxy. Animation and article are linked below. Up next, microlensing planets. It's not my favorite exoplanet discovery method, but here they're setting a new and very interesting record. It's a star that's a quarter to half the sun's size, a planet one to two Earths in size, sitting one and a half to three AU away. Folks, it may be a chilly planet, but at that size and distance, it's probably rocky, terrestrial, and if it has an intrinsic magnetic field, this may be one of the best planets yet discovered outside the solar system to find a biosphere. Quick notes from Chandra and Hubble up next. While astronomy hasn't existed long enough to see galaxies collide or other long-term astrophysical dynamics, the emission and dusty gas tails are pretty good indicators of where things are coming from, where they are going, and what's being affected. Merge your special at the Chandra link below. A much more rapid astrophysical process is the NOVA event. Hubble here looking at one they have studied long enough to see some motion of the expanding cloud against the background, but they say the light actually arrived here in the year 300. They've pinpointed it. At such a time, can you even imagine the reaction of the humans on this planet? It is of course much faded now, but Hubble picks it up and has been picking it up long enough to make this sequence here, again, its change against the background couple pretty good sequences to watch for the top story here because the science itself is pretty too. There is a general guess about the number of galaxies in the field of view and that is about 2 trillion. Both mainstream and plasma cosmologies can get behind this number in various scenarios. But where mainstream demands to see it all clearly, now, plasma cosmology knows better. Here the observation is to be taken but the conclusion is mistaken. Yes, the sky is darker than they thought it would be and therefore they think there are far fewer galaxies out there than we imagined. That's the mistake. In reality, the dust and cold plasma are tricking our technology, just as it hid the electric currents at Enceladus when Cassini flew through, and just as it hid those nova events in the galaxy we reported just earlier this week, 
and just has been the case for every discovery in between of everything hiding in plain sight after the introduction of new technology. And guess what? Our technology needs to more than double before they could ever truly claim mastery over the visible field. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about Earth's magnetic field, cosmology, and more with our channel playlists and the videos at our website homepage. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.